Back there, we can call them. Get you some coffee. You look as if you need it. Hop in. Oh, I'm quite all right, really. I, I suppose you think I'm being traditionally feminine. To come all the way out to Westchester County to meet a man at a deserted house at dusk? Oh, no. <laughs> Lower that eyebrow, Mr. Barnett. My firm sent me. Your firm? Yes. Knapp and Lutcher. Very respectable attorneys. They're handling the eastern end of a very involved inheritance case in Chicago. The house is part of the estate. Who are you supposed to be meeting? A man named Charles Fuller. The only living heir. He flew out from Chicago to inspect the house. I was going to decide whether to fix it up or tear it down. I've been sent to White Plains to search the deed, and I was supposed to bring all the papers to him late this afternoon. Not very romantic, I'm afraid. Whose estate was it? Can you tell me? I can tell you anything that's already a matter of record. If you'll like this for me. Horace Fleeson Fuller. The financier? He's been dead a thousand years. <laughs> Not quite. Since 1919. He was killed in an accident in Europe. A train wreck. 1919, huh? No wonder there's only one living heir. I'm sure the others have all died of starvation by now. Seems that Mr. Fuller was a fugitive. He was involved in some kind of a scandal in Illinois. I'll say he was. Quite a famous case. He was selling stock in Lake Michigan. Highly watered. <laughs> anyway, that's why it's taken over 30 years to settle the estate. There were so many claims against it. It's only coming out of litigation now. And there's only two million dollars left. And only one living heir. Well, wherever Charles Fuller is, he's certainly not poverty-stricken now. Yes, and wherever he is, I've got to find him. And right now. I think I better go get the state police. I'll take you to them. The Hawthorne Barracks is only a few miles from here. We'll pass the Fuller estate, won't we, on the way? I hope at very high speed. Why? Because I'm curious. I've got to have a look. It won't be a minute. Sure you won't come? No, thanks. When your minute's up, you're going to hear a lady scream.
it, not me. I saw that face again. Where? Around there, in the tower window. I'd shut it up tighter than a tomb. Oh, that's a nice choice of words. Where are you going? Inside. Want to come? I do not. Well, on second thought, I'd be delighted. Something rip? Uh, never mind. Ooh, what a place. It's real cozy, like an open grave. I said it. Wet cement. like it still is. What do you mean? Look, no dust, no cobwebs. Room's perfectly clean. Someone has lived in this room recently. I'm glad you said lived. Listen. It's an old phonograph. Can we go upstairs? <gasps> we didn't hear you knock. Hello there. Matter of fact, we made enough noise to... Raise the dead. Who are you? I might ask you the same question since you're intruders in this house. I happen to be butler to the Fullers and not required to take impertinence from strangers. You're the Fullers butler? You mean were, used to be. Mr. Horace Fuller occupies this house. I am and have been for many years. Butler to Mr. and Mrs. Fuller. That's impossible. The Fullers have been dead over 30 years. Have they indeed? Here, confound it, Dobson. What is this? Why, Horace, how nice. We have callers. How very, very nice. Trespassers, Mrs. Fuller. Intruders. How do you do, my dear? How do you do? My name's Barnett, Mike Barnett. This is Miss Ann Stevens. I found them prowling, sir. As a matter of fact, we were... How nice of you two lovely people to stop by. 
We're so glad. We haven't had callers in ever so long. Why, my lands, I don't think since before Armistice Day. Really? Which one? Why, how many were there? Last November, 1918. Will I ever forget it? We were in New York at the time. What a commotion in the streets. There was Horace dancing with the Marines, shrieking, Hang the Kaiser! Oh, oh, you must think me rude. I... I am Horace Fuller. You are? And I'm Mrs. Fuller. And you must stay for dinner. Please, I insist. There's a storm coming up. Dobson, two extra places for dinner. And take their coats. It's simple fare, I'm afraid. President Wilson got us quite used to one-course meals. What with wheatless days and meatless days. <gasps> I'll be for staring, dear, but uh, your dress isn't my dress. Hmm? Oh, short, you mean. Oh, well, uh, that's the way they're wearing it for tennis this year. Tennis, of course. I notice Mr. Barnett is wearing a soft color. And, my dear, I think you'd better tend to the table. Dobson's not used to sitting for company these days. We have so few callers. A lovely dress, rather daring, but becoming. You, you seem disturbed, Mr. Barnett. Well, frankly, I am. If you're Horace Fuller, well, you're supposed to have been dead for 30 years. Your supposition is correct, Mr. Barnett. My wife and I are dead, quite dead. You're quite right, Mr. Barnett. Mrs. Fuller and I have been dead for over 30 years. Dead, but not buried. Unless, unless you consider being walled up in this mausoleum for the past five years a form of burial. But you were supposed to have been killed in a train wreck in 1919. We were in a train wreck in Switzerland. There were survivors. We were among them. What, you let the world think you weren't, huh? Mr. Barnett, there had been business reverses in Chicago. Frankly, I was indicted for fraud. Oh, I make no apologies. I was in Europe to avoid a warrant for my arrest, and I was in Switzerland evading extradition. That train wreck came in handy, didn't it? By the time it was safe to come back, the war had started. The Second World War. Well, after the war, we finally did get back. And here you found us. Oh, I knew it had to come sooner or later. You mean you've been here for five years? This house is supposed to be deserted. Oh, better than that. It's supposed to be haunted. We find that its, its gruesome reputation has kept prowlers away. Up to now. Is your wife ill? Delicately put, Mr. Barnett. You noticed our costume, the rather archaic comforts of our home, the confusion of tenses in our speech? I didn't want to mention it. Oh, thank you. I said that we were survivors of a train wreck. We did not escape completely. Mrs. Fuller received a severe blow on her head. Her mind has been permanently injured. You mean she doesn't remember anything that's happened since 1919? My dear, this is 1919. She is always 24 years old. And 1920 never comes. Tragic. Oh, I don't know. Wouldn't you like to be 24 forever? But I must ask you to humor her while you're here. Live with her in the past. This may seem absurd, but I would appreciate it. Of course. Now, don't try to take her into your own time sphere. This only confuses her and upsets her and makes her violent, dangerously violent. Won't you come in? Dinner is ready. I I'm not really very hungry. Hmm? Miss Stevens and Mr. Barnett. You know, we've missed our things a-going recently, Mr. Barnett. Tell me, what's the 
exciting on Broadway. Well, to be honest with you, Mrs. Fuller, I'm not much of a... Uh, well, uh, Lightman is still enjoying a good run. That delightful Frank Bacon. Yes, and then there's that new one by George M. Cohen. Oh, yes, with Chauncey Olcott, isn't it? I think so. Miss Stevens, did you by any chance see the wild duck? The, the wild... Uh, the, uh, the Ibsen play, you know? Uh, yes, uh, Hortense has adopted Ibsen, women's rights, you know, ever since this suffragette movement. Oh, you're voting next year? Uh, well, uh, now that we've got the vote, I suddenly realize that I'll have to admit my age to exercise it. <laughs> but I think I'm going to vote for Mr. Harding. Oh, I think Mr. Harding's much better than... Uh, Dobson, uh, would you bring some wine, please? Uh, surely you don't object to a, a friendly drink. You're not a couple of bone dryers, are you? Well, as a matter of fact, I don't touch the stuff often, but... I was sorry to see the 18th Amendment pass. I'm afraid it's going to cause a lot of trouble. Oh, I don't know when it's ratified. Who's your bootlegger, Mrs. Fuller? A, a bootlegger? I don't know his name. Hortense, my dear. Horace deals with him. He drives around in a big black motor car. Oh, it's all delightfully wicked. Mr. Barnett, uh, whom do you favor in the Willard fight out in Toledo? Will it fight? Well, I think I'll put a little money on this new fellow, Jack Dempsey. Oh, that's risky. Well, it's a killer. Wouldn't want to make a friendly bet, would you? Uh, no. No, thank you. I'll bet Dempsey knocks him out. I'll bet he does it in the third round. Uh. What's the name of the girl in Jack o' Lantern, the Algin? I don't know, I'm sure. But have you seen this new moving picture actor, Rudolph Valentino? No, but I hear he's a wonderful... Uh, come, come, my dear. It's getting late past your bedtime, you know. But our guests... The guest room's already, Mr. Fuller. Uh, you may see our guests in the morning. In the morning? Uh, yes, you don't think we'd let you leave the house on a night like this, do you? But... Uh, uh, no, no buts, Miss Stevens. We've already made arrangements and we'll not take no for an answer. Dobson, will you show our guests to their rooms? Good night. Good night. It was a lovely dinner. Good night, Mr. Barnett. Sleep well. Thank you. Good night. This way, please. Good night. Yes. You idiotic fool. Oh, what happened? What did I do? It's what you said. Enough to make that Barnett suspicious of his half as smart as I think he is. What did I say? No, don't tell me. You can't remember what happened in 1919. <sighs> We'd have to wait for Dobson. Miss Stevens? Good night. Night. Door's locked. So is mine. Open up here. Say, what is this? What's going on? Lady, we're in a jam. They suspect we've caught on. Well, I haven't. Horace said the Fullers were really dead. Yes. Well, he's right. They're the Fullers. The only genuine Fuller in this house is the guy you were supposed to meet here, and he's probably down in the cellar now under a patch of wet cement. Why would they want to kill him? Because he's the only one who'd know they weren't the real Fullers. They got him out of the way, they'd have a nice juicy melon to split as soon as someone found them. You mean we were supposed to discover them? You were. They knew about your date with Charles Fuller here, and they got here ahead of you and put him to sleep under a blanket of wet cement. You were supposed to go running to the authorities with the startling information that the Fullers are still alive. Well, what made you suspect? She said she was going to vote for Harding next year. 
The voters didn't hear of Harding until 1920. They hadn't heard of bootlegging in 1919 either. Prohibition law didn't go into effect for the next year. Well, if they suspect we've caught on, what do you think they'll do? I don't know, but I'll bet there's a lot more cement down in the cellar. We've got to do something quick. This is the top floor. Must be about 50 feet straight down. There's a ledge out here. You bothered by height? Yes. But I'll overcome it. Jeeves, on your feet. We'll join the rest of your team and pay a visit to the police. They got a reserved seat for people who bury people in cement suits. They've had it since way before 1919. but the sovereign state of New York. If you tune in on this same channel next week at the same time, you'll see another exciting case reenacted from my private files. Many of the situations have been fictionalized, but what you will witness will be portrayed substantially as it happened and acted on the spot where it happened. You'll witness what occurred in each case when I was assigned to follow that man.